Welcome to the Miss Universe 2023 finale recap. I'm Danny Walker. Thanks for clicking on the episode. If you'd like access to the extended version, please consider joining memberships. Of course, you can also support the channel by hitting that super thanks button or simply sharing an episode with a friend. Let's get into this. What a fabulous show. Personally, I loved the run of everything. I felt like the pacing of the show was great. I watched the show on Fubo TV. It's the only place I could find it and watch on my laptop online. I do wish it were a little bit easier to figure out how in the world to access the show online. I'm in a group message with my class of Miss USA contestants and we were all scrambling trying to figure out how to watch the show. In terms of the onstage opening number outfits, I wish that they would have limited the styles that the contestants could choose from. I wanted just a little bit more cohesiveness. I understand that they were all from the same designer, but a lot of the pieces didn't even look like they were a part of the same collection. One thing that I thought was really great is when the contestants were announced in the top 20 that their flags were on the stage and that's something I always want to see. I feel like for some reason some pageants they don't show the flag or the contestant name or they show one or the other and for anybody who's just jumping into a show I think it's really essential that all of that is very clear. Let's get into the top 20. Who noticed that there were no capes? Interesting. It was said that the capes were a mistake during prelims. That's what a lot of people were talking about. But it seems like they changed their mind again and then said, you know what, forget it. Don't do any capes even for finals. So that was interesting. And even during rehearsal video clips that I was watching online, you could see contestants practicing with capes, these capes that they thought they were going to prepare for. So that was an interesting little change. Nicaragua was on. She had great energy. She was first out on stage. Fabulous posing, great hair flip. Obviously she was a front runner, but she really showed up tonight and I was just pumped watching her. Spain and I feel like her performance here was stronger than it was in the preliminary competition. She really toned down the facials but in a good way. Puerto Rico had an incredible spin turn on stage and I love that we were really seeing the contestants open up a little bit more. I feel like we saw some safe performances at the preliminary competition but this was finals and Puerto Rico turned it up and she looked perfect. Namibia also had a great walk. I do wish, however, she still would have wore her hair up. I just think she has such a beautiful face and that ponytail look was really, really working for her. I felt like she was solid and doing such a great job and it just reminded me of Miss Universe 2018. I felt like collectively that group of women presented some of the most consistently great performances, especially for the finals night swimsuit competition. So I was getting those vibes from this group of ladies. Venezuela, what can I say? When she walked out, my note for her was that her hair was just perfect. She was on, she was on, she was consistent. She was moving forward. India, I think that she had a great performance for swim. She reined in the arms a little bit more. Her posing and turn section was really good, but she missed that last bit of eye contact on the stage. And I feel like for finals, the little moments matter. Thailand, her energy changed for finals. So she was bringing more energy for swim. That's what I wanted to see from her. I felt like in prelims, she was looking a little bit tense for it, but she really started to open up a little bit more here for finals and she needed that. My heart was pounding for USA. I, I just suddenly got so nervous when I saw her. Now, I think that she maintained her energy, but I do believe that her finals night performance, like the routine itself, wasn't as clean as it was in prelims. I feel like if she would have literally just delivered the exact performance from prelims that she could have advanced. When Nepal came out, the crowd went wild and I really feel like that could have helped her. I feel like the finals performance that she brought for swim needed to be a little bit happier and that's what she had in the preliminary performance, which is what I talked about in my preliminary recap. I felt like she had the, a nice amount of facial changes. She had like sexier looks, but also she was smiling more than she was for finals. Peru was on my edge for my top 20 and I talked about her just a little bit. I was worried about her because of her gown. I, I It's a gorgeous gown for prelims, but I, I just thought that she could have used something different. Now, when she came out for finals though, I felt that her swimsuit performance here, although prelims was great, I think she was even better for finals. 
Cameroon talked about her earlier. I loved her. I'm so glad that she placed. I love that in this new era, we are starting to see a lot more of our non-sash factor countries placing at Miss Universe. And frankly, that's what I feel it should be. These women that were in the top 20 this year, I think that it made a lot of sense. There weren't really big surprises for me when I was watching it, but I love that there is room for great performances and that's what we were seeing. With that being said though, I do feel like Cameroon's performance was safe and she was giving less than she was in the preliminary competition. I would have loved to have seen a more interesting spin turn or some sort of posing in there. Okay, Colombia, with that opening little pivoting turn that she was doing, I had no doubt about her. I know that she's a strong performer on stage. This performance is what I expected from her. And then she brought back her little wink at the end of the runway. And I was expecting that too, because I think it's a smart move. I was so excited to see Pakistan place. That made me happy. There we have it, another contestant that I felt like really deserved to be up there. But I feel like in past years, our non-sash factor countries, they were often just getting knocked out. And I think that if you deliver a deserving performance, regardless of the name across your chest, you should still be able to qualify for that final pageant. I still wish she would have advanced. I don't know if she would have wore the same gown. I think it would have been still amazing for finals, honestly, but I'm curious if she had something else. Australia, I loved her energy. There's just something about her that is so bright and carefree and it draws you in. And at the end of the day, that is what a Miss Universe does. She does capture your attention and that's what Australia was doing. Philippines had a very strong entrance for finals. I feel like that was stronger than even in prelims, but I do think that in prelims, in terms of her posing, the posing, she really nailed that in prelims. And I feel like it got a little bit messier as well as the spin turn for finals. Portugal had a great walk for swim, strong, strong opening and a very nice spin turn. Honestly, she was on my edge for swim in my preliminary recap. I liked her entrance, but there was something in prelims that I wish would have been, I forget right now, but would have been a little bit different in terms of the posing section or the end of the runway. South Africa and that smile, my goodness, I love it. And her hair, stunning. Now, I think that she did a fantastic job here, but I do think at universe it is riskier to put your hands through your hair and kind of toss it to the side we don't see as much playing with the hair unless we're talking about removing hair from the face if it's being blocked or if we're talking about a simple just like sweeping of the hair back but regardless i still think the performance itself the walk it was still strong el salvador oh the entrance, great entrance. And how could you not have a great entrance when you're the hometown girl and people are cheering for you like that? Oh, okay. So it was interesting. In her first posing section, she hesitated slightly, which she also did in prelims, but she hesitated slightly less than in prelims. So I was like, okay, maybe the judges didn't catch that. Maybe she can be moving on. But I still think that she had a great walk and it was at that point possible for her still to move on regardless of that slight hesitation. When they all came back out for their final walk and final look, it was really interesting and kind of cute to see that they were all in sync at the beginning. My goodness, they were all like marching across the stage on beat. I really liked Nicaragua, Puerto Rico, Namibia, Thailand, Venezuela, Colombia, Pakistan, South Africa, and El Salvador. But let's talk about the real top 10. I was really glad to see that we had a live performer. Oh my goodness, I feel like these pageants need it. And it was John Legend, fantastic, so talented. So he was singing while our top 10 walked in evening gowns. Let's talk about their performances. Puerto Rico, I was very surprised by this gown choice because this is the gown that Florida USA won in this year at her state pageant, but it's in a different color and it has the added shoulder pieces. Now it is beautiful and I love the styling choice, although it was very unexpected for me. I just, I always see her in her signature beautiful waves. So this to me, I was like, this is great. I think it's fun and I think that she looked stunning and had a fantastic performance. She's been in my top picks the entire time, so I was already hoping that she would advance. 
Thailand. So what's interesting to me about her finals look and her preliminary look is this. If you followed her at her national pageant, it looks like for her preliminary at Miss Universe that that gown was a variation of the gown that she won in at Miss Universe Thailand. Then I was surprised to see that for finals, she seemed to be wearing a variation of her preliminary gown at Miss Universe Thailand. So she did this little swap and I haven't seen something like that before in pageantry. And I just, I'm so curious what went into the decision making process for that. But she looked really, really beautiful in it. I feel like gown is really her strength and those like sultry looks that she does is what she does so well. So I had a really good feeling about her when she was going into gown because of that. I was like, I think they're gonna love her. Peru, I was so happy about this gown change. Her hair looked great with this. I thought that this performance was stronger than her preliminary gown performance, and that's really the way that it should be on finals, but Miss Universe is really, really tough, and you never know if you're just gonna get outperformed. Columbia wore the same gown from prelims, and I knew that she was going to. Many of you probably did as well if you saw an interview that she did online, and I was already seeing people talking about how frustrated Columbia must be because they went back to the sheer metallic gown for their title holder uh, and, and it just it didn't work and I feel like my response to that would be okay well it didn't work for Colombia but it worked for Nicaragua and it worked for Thailand so I don't think it was a problem that Colombia was wearing the sheer metallic that we often or almost always see Columbia in and I think that she had a beautiful performance and that is what should matter and I think that's why she advanced. Nicaragua was beautiful so I loved this gown change and this gown style let me know it reminded me of first runner-up at Miss Universe Colombia same type of thing and I loved that gown it had the, a structured sleeve it had the sheer glistening gloves but this gown had the colorful removable opera coat so a little little pop of color in there for her but she was stunning she shined on stage the entire time and it's really funny because in our group text, we always watch the pageants together in my class of Miss USA, and we always have commentary. And at the very beginning of the show, I had this gut feeling that Nicaragua was gonna win. And at the top of the show, we always like to share just like our initial thoughts, picks, things like that. And that was my first comment in the group chat. I said something like, I think it's gonna be Nicaragua or, or something like that. My gut feeling was right. Philippines, Michelle wore black. I talked about this in another episode and then I remember seeing a comment from someone saying, no, 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 she said she's gonna wear a color. And yes, she did for prelims, but she was gonna wear black for finals. And I, cause in my head I was, I was second guessing myself. I was like, I really thought that I saw an interview of her and she, it was post crowning Miss Universe Philippines shortly after. And she talked about how she wanted to wear all of the colors in the spectrum in the spectrum meaning that she would wear a black gown when she said she was wearing that i was like oh i really hope she doesn't but i will say that i did love this gown this was stunning and philippines i think that they need to keep going on this track of these gowns and, and how unique they are and i mean she looked amazing and had a outstanding performance for this Venezuela wore the same gown, but honestly, it was a good choice, and I think it was smart that she removed the opera coat. She really didn't need it. She delivered a fantastic performance here, so for me personally, she was on my edge at this point. I was like, I can see her moving forward. Australia, I wish she changed the gown, but my note was that she just has this natural aura about herself. It's drawing you in. There is this attractive quality about her, and I felt that again for gown. So regardless of the gown, I would have been moving her forward too. Now let's talk about our top five onstage question and answers. Australia was asked, how would you use the Miss Universe platform to promote gender equality? And she said, I would use the Miss Universe platform to push a message that I think this community is strong and when we work together, we can create changes. And when it comes to gender equality, when we use our voice and we use our power to create a change, that's when real movement happens. Now, the way that she delivered this was great, very confident, but I did feel like the answer was quite vague. So it did surprise me to see her moving on to the top three. They asked Puerto Rico, if you win tonight, what would you bring to the Miss Universe brand? I would use this opportunity to show the world the, and then I couldn't 
catch exactly what she said right here because of the audience cheering and I was watching the Spanish version so the translators were speaking over her. She said, I would use the opportunity to show the world the dot 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 of beauty queens and how it dot dot dot, I'm not sure. I would use my activism on regarding mental health and telling the world that how important it is if we use our voice and we take up space. If we are courageous enough to be ourselves in this world, I would use the platform to reach out and be that. Thank you so much. I think she had a great answer here and she was very on brand, but her delivery seemed a bit more nervous than she was at her national competition. And I don't know how the judges felt about that. Nicaragua was asked, what qualities and values guide you as a leader and role model for others? She said, the quality that has inspired me and has inspired millions of women today is humility and being able to appreciate all of the little things because that's where the most valuable thing is, the essence of being human. Now, the audience was going wild for this, and I feel like the moment that she talked about being humble and practicing gratitude, essentially, that it really won people over, in addition to all of her other qualifications. And when I heard that, I was like, yes. Thailand was asked, if you could speak to a room full of students about online bullying, what would you say? And she said, I would say not to listen to what people have to say, because in the end, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but it is the way that we, we react to it. Use our voice to stand up for what is right and be the change that we want to see in this world by leading by example. Don't listen to the hate because it doesn't shape us, but what shapes us is how we get back up and how we move forward from that. I loved this answer. Her delivery of it was great. She didn't sound really repetitive in it. And for me, honestly, I felt like she had the strongest onstage answer at that point. Colombia was asked, if this was your last day on earth, how would you live it? She said, I am already living it because I am here. I am breaking stereotypes, being a woman, being a mother. It's to leave history a legacy, something I want to transmit to women and children. And she definitely did that. And honestly, at that point, she had so much sincerity, I thought she was moving on to a top three. She would have if I was judging. Now let's hear what our top three had to say for their final answer. I asked everyone, if you could live one year in another woman's shoes, who would you choose and why? One thing I don't know if you noticed that I didn't love is that there were no headphones this year on the contestants. So that meant that after Thailand went that Australia and Nicaragua got to hear the onstage answers. And I just feel like it's an unfair advantage and I've never seen that at Miss Universe before. I did not love that. Thailand said, I would choose Malala Yousaf because I know the struggles she has to deal with to get where she is today. She has to fight for women's education and fight for all women to be able to lead by example. If I could choose anyone, that would be her. Good answer, strong answer, although I feel like this is a typical answer that I hear from a lot of pageant contestants when they're asked anything about their role models. My goodness, I hear Malala Yousaf all the time. Other top answers would be Michelle Obama, Zendaya, my mom, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, or a former national or international title holder of the pageant that they're competing in. Australia did not really understand the question. It was like a miscongeniality moment in real life. Here's what Australia said. I would live in my mother's year her birth year because she's a very strong woman. She's tough. She taught me how to work hard. She taught me how to be brave, how to be strong, and I'm forever grateful for those that she taught me. I may have missed a little bit of the end when I was listening to the translator speak over her. Obviously, she thought they were asking what year she would like to live in instead of whose shoes she would like to live in for the year. That happens though when you get a little bit nervous. Nicaragua, here's what she said. Now, I don't know the name of the woman. I'm not familiar and I, I couldn't understand the name of the person she would trade shoes with. So bear with me. She essentially said I would choose Mary because she opened the gap and she gave an opportunity to many women. And what I would do, I would want that income gap to open up so that women can work in any area that they choose to work in because there are no limitations for women. That was 1750. Now in 2023, we are making history. When she said that, for me, she won because she referenced a very unique 
historical figure and she also addressed an issue that's near and dear to her heart and then she kind of wrapped everything up with this inspiring message talking about the past the present where we are today as women and essentially saying that we have no limitations we are capable we can do whatever we want and of course that's a great message that any miss universe should be sharing I also want to mention Arbany's farewell gown because it just was very Arbany to me. She's always wore these really unique styles with these haute couture elements. We saw that, I feel like, throughout this entire week, especially at Miss Universe with her gowns that she wore. But we saw it a lot throughout her year and it made a lot of sense because, hello, she is a designer. So I feel like designers, oftentimes, they have their own style and they know how to be daring and pull off something that's going to make them feel really confident like this. So the headpiece reminds me of the one that JLo wore and then also of the ones that Cher wore as well. So I thought it was really fun, unique, and it's definitely going to be memorable looking back in Miss Universe history. The other thing I'm so excited about is that Miss Universe 2024 is in... Mexico! <laughs> Look at how excited all of the hosts were about this. I cannot wait for this. I wanted to go to El Salvador this year. That wasn't possible for me. I am praying that I will have the opportunity next year to go to Miss Universe. Please keep supporting the channel so that maybe I can have that opportunity. Uh, and also, thank you all so much. The channel hit 120,000 this week and that's that's wild oh thank you for joining me for this journey and i hope that you'll continue to stick around for it as i work towards that 125 goal so let's talk about the results australia was second runner-up to me that made a lot of sense thailand first runner-up and nicaragua is our new miss universe so i'm so excited for all of these ladies honestly it was a really difficult even top 20. there's just so much to be proud of in representing your country and being courageous enough to go after this big big dream i'm very very happy with the show this year i think overall they did an outstanding job with production. I cannot wait for next year and I cannot wait to follow the journey of our new Miss Universe. Oh, the other thing that I should mention too is I looked back at the history of Nicaragua at Miss Universe and so far they had only had four placements at Miss Universe. Four. Their most recent was in 2020 and I love that. I feel like it just sends a great message to all of the other countries that are competing at Miss Universe that it is possible to win without being a sash factor country. And I just thought that that was so fabulous and so inspiring. And I hope that if you're watching this right now and you want to start your own road to Miss Universe, that you'll feel really encouraged by Nicaragua's win because it's really inspiring. If there's anything else that you want to see on the channel, leave your requests in the comments. I do pay attention to those and do my best to create episodes that you are looking for. And stay tuned because post Miss Universe, I will still release some other episodes about the 2023 season. Once again, I appreciate all the love and support and I hope to see you all very soon.